Hey, and welcome to Your Hell Truth. I'm your host, Brock Hardman. And today we're going to briefly talk about deodorants. So, uh, I was thinking the other day that uh, this would be a good topic because I actually use deodorant that not many people use and not many people probably know about or have heard about and kind of my reasons why I use it. Uh, I think this month is uh, cancer awareness, a lot of different types of cancer, breast cancer and a lot of other different cancers. And it got me to thinking about uh, some you know, education materials that I have read in the past that had to deal with breast cancer. So in case you weren't aware, they have been doing uh, quite a bit um, of research over the past, I would say, eight to ten years on um, whether or not most brands of deodorants could potentially cause breast cancer because what they have kind of found is that uh, higher than normal estrogen levels and paraben levels and uh, a couple of other different chemicals uh, have been linked to tumorous cancer growths. And um, so a lot of different deodorants use things that people kind of call into question on, hey, is there a link between people who get breast cancer and certain types of deodorants? Now, I'm not going to say from you know my point of view whether or not I think there's any definitive evidence. However, I will say it is worth exploring the idea that uh, excessive use or misuse of certain products and chemicals um, of which may be in deodorants could potentially lead to different types of cancers. Um, a lot of people just don't even think twice about their deodorant. You know, they get up in the morning, they put it on, and uh, that's what they, do. you know, that's kind of the normal routine. They don't really care about the ingredients. Well, I would challenge you um, to start caring about the ingredients. You know, we should always, uh, you know, know what we're putting both in and on our bodies because it has an effect. You know, whether or not you want to admit it or acknowledge it, everything that you do to your body has some sort of effect. And especially with the rise in certain different types of cancers that haven't even been really um, invented or cases known until kind of the Industrial Revolution, uh, or especially in the last, you know, five or ten decades, you kind of have to question what are we doing as a society that creates these problems. And, you know, I think there's, you know, pretty compelling evidence that things that we eat and things that we put in and on our body have the potential to create some of the health challenges that we're seeing. So I just wanted to kind of bring to your attention uh, my opinion on what you know deodorants I recommend and what deodorants uh, I use and which ones that you know I think could um, use further investigation. But um, here's the one that I use. It's uh, you know I don't just use this brand. But I use similar brands and, you know, similar, um, they have different uh, scents as well. Uh, this is natu naturally fresh. And you can see that it's paraben free and it's also free of aluminum. Because a lot of the, you know, real highly um, antiperspirant, anti, uh, you know, deodorant type um, properties of deodorants will uh, basically create a mask that doesn't allow the odor to escape. And even though this is not as good, it it works for me, you know. You know, I do definitely have to watch, um, you know, if I drink coffee or things that create stress within the body because coffee actually creates a stress hormone, which is released through the armpits. And so uh, kind of another incentive for me not to drink coffee uh, is this deodorant because I do have a small um, kind of stress smell after I drink coffee uh, if I don't use a high-powered uh, antiperspirant or deodorant such as, you know, Degree and stuff like that. You know, the name brand ones that use aluminum and a lot of the other, uh, you know, chemicals that you can't even pronounce, um, I avoid those. And not because they don't work better, but just because I like to reduce my chances of, you know, putting stuff, you know, on my skin that is not good for it. Um, I think over time, you know, repetitive use of something over and over and over 
that's actually not good for you, simply to reduce a smell, you know, may not be the best idea. Now, however, if, <laughs> if I was one of those people that had an overpowering odor uh, all the time, then, you know, I might look into different options. Um, but uh, as far as I know, I'm not. If I am, please let me know. Um, but I, you know, I choose to use this for, for health reasons, not that it works better, but, you know, that I want to sustain my health and that I know that chemicals and other products aren't necessarily good for me. So that's it. I just wanted to kind of give you some information on, you know, alternate deodorants that are out there that uh, you might find useful um, and maybe you will consider to uh, try out and uh, hopefully that will help uh, give you some more insight and that's it for today talk to you tomorrow